In the previous section, we talked about uh, the computational science and how it connects different uh, ideas between theory and experiment. And we are particularly looking at the connecting of the dots between experiment and theory by using computational experiments. So if you look at a, a material system like, let's say, take water, which is the most abundant material on Earth. So if you look at that, and uh, we see that the water has three phases. Uh, the liquid water, the ice, and the vapor or the steam. So if we can connect those dots by doing computational experiments between these three two different phases. And that's where the power of computational science and engineering comes from. So now let's talk about the length and time scales. As I said earlier in the previous uh, module that we are talking about 40 orders of magnitude from atomic level to let's say the large objects uh, of uh, galaxies. So if you look at that uh, aspect, we are now concentrating on the microscopic part of the system. So if you look at in this case, we are looking at four different length scales. So one, number one length scale is what we call electronic structure. So before I get into those four uh, different length scales, let's also talk about the units. So we will talk about the units meter. And in that meter, if I go to 10 to the power minus 10 of a meter, that becomes one angstrom. And one angstrom is almost at the atomic level. So if you look at an atom, maybe 10 angstrom or even less, or two or three angstrom. So if you look at that level where you can look at the electronic structure of an atom, that is what we call uh, the ab initio level where we can do all the electronic calculations. So if you go to the very, very, very fundamental level of computation, then you can do what we call is ab initio calculations, which is based on the atomic structure of the material. So it has a nucleus, it has electronic cloud around it, there are orbitals where electrons are moving. And based on the structure of the material, let's say if it is uh, water H2O, you have to look at the atomic orbitals of hydrogen and oxygen, and when they create a hydrogen bond together, and that we can understand in terms of what we call as ab initio calculation. So here the scale what you're looking on the slide is uh, in angstrom. So you are going from one to, uh, let's say, 100 angstrom. That's where we are looking at the ab initio calculations. And what happens in that, because atomic orbitals are many, and you have to deal with lots of computations. You can only deal with very few atoms at that scale. But in that case, you solve the quantum mechanical equations using the Schrodinger equation, and there are no assumptions made. So this is the most ac accurate way you can describe material, but the limitation is that it is very, very, very tiny very small. So you cannot understand the bulk properties from those electronic calculations, but you can understand what is happening at the atomic and the molecular level. Now if you take large number of atoms, let's say 1,000 to 10,000 to a million atoms, then we are getting into the second scale which is called atomistic scale. Now we are not looking inside the atom, but we are looking at, at the entire atomic system which has formed molecules. So if you look at in water molecule again, which we are using as an example, what you will see is that H2O uh, has uh, uh, two hydrogen atoms connected with one oxygen atom. So if you look at this system, which is a triangular system with this particular angle between hydrogen atoms and the oxygen atom, now we can simulate that with atomistic model, which is where we use molecular dynamics as well as Monte Carlo systems. So this is very interesting, uh, the, a bit of history about molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo. It all started at the, uh, before the Second World War or Second World War time when uh, there was a major project to build an atomic bomb. Now the, the question was how can we calculate the number of neutrons in a particular state? And so that's where uh, the famous uh, mathematician John von Neumann came up with this uh, model which is called Monte Carlo simulation, which was essentially based on uh, understanding that how statistically particles will be distributed. On the other end, Elder and Weinreich, who were also the scientists about the same time, 
they create a deterministic approach by using a very simple potential model which is called hard sphere model and connecting them together in a very deterministic way where you solve Newton's laws of motion between particles as they hit each other. And this is what we will look into some of the experiments which I will be showing you very shortly. So if you look at here in that scale which is going from 10 to the power uh, 2 angstrom to about 10 to the power 4 angstrom which is what we call atomistic scale. Now we can go bigger than that and now we are go going into tens and thousands of microns which is getting into micrometer scale that's where we go to microstructures. So now we can look at the grain boundaries, now we can look at the clusters of uh, let's say icicles which are connecting together and that level of understanding now we can use finite element methods or much uh, methods which are at the higher scale. So now you can look at large number of nodes that are connecting all these thousands of particles. So we started from electronic structure, now we went into what we call atomic uh, level, what is called uh, microstructure, and then when we go even higher scales of let's say meters and kilometers, where we can understand the behavior of uh, a complex system at that scale, that we call is continuum. A good example is uh, computational fluid dynamics. So if you look at computational fluid dynamics, or finite element and boundary element system, now you understand that we gone into the scale which is 10 to the power 7, 10 to the power uh, 9 of angstrom which essentially is close to the meter scale. So this is where we define four scales which is we call angstrom scale which is the uh, dealing with the idea of atomic structures and it is quantum mechanical calculations which is we call ab initio calculations. Then we go to nanoscales, which is, again, we are looking at the 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 4 of angstrom, or in terms of meter, 10 to the power minus 10 meter to 10 to the power minus 8 meters. That is called nanoscale. And that's nanoscale we are going to use molecular dynamics as well as uh, Monte Carlo simulations. In this course, we will be focusing on molecular dynamics simulations. Then you go to a higher scale, which is called mesoscale, where we can look at the microstructures as we uh, looked at the previous. So we go to microstructure, and then if you look at here, which is called the mesoscale. That goes almost like 10 to the power 4 uh, to 10 to the power 7 of uh, Angstrom scale. And then if you go to continuum, then we are talking about uh, the centimeters, meters, and kilometers, and that's where you look at constitutive models to understand the material system. If you look at the molecular dynamic properties are observed at the nanoscale system. So we are going to focus on the nanoscale. The nanoscale properties are then used to predict macroscopic behavior. Now this is where the whole crux of the material and the model that we will be using in this course is that using let's say few thousands of particles and using some molecular dynamic simulations we will be now able to predict the macroscopic behavior. So looking at the particles at 10 to the power 2, or let's say 1,000 microns to 10,000 microns, we will be able to predict the behavior at the meter and the kilometer space. And this is where the multiscale modeling comes into being because now what we are doing, we are connecting to microscopic world to the macroscopic world. So now we have a very powerful rational phenomena where we can look at the material at microscopic level and predict how it will behave at the macroscopic level where we are going to use this material. So if we, let's say if we design new materials, new plastics, and we understand that material at microscopic level by changing atomic structure or molecular uh, binding of different kinds of, uh, let's say, uh, the molecules which are large chain molecules in the polymers, we can now design plastic that will behave the way we want them to behave. And this is where the power of um, computational engineering comes in. So again, uh, let me say we are going to deal with now different kinds of scales. We'll look at computational models, and this is how we will build this whole molecular dynamics uh, system for the computational discoveries.